Uncle Danny, I think you hit it right on the head today when you started talking about this, uh, this narrowing. And I don't know about you guys, but I've, I've only came out of the womb once. And I really, I'm not like my brother. My brother, he remembers everything um, coming out of the womb and all that stuff. And I was like, well, thank God for that mess. I mean, thank God for that. But I don't really remember any of that stuff. I don't want to remember any of that stuff. All I do remember now is I feel that God has got us in a canal. And he's narrowing it up. And... Uh, like I said in Sunday school, I, I watched Brother Steve. He's having his, um, his meetings down, down in Florida, and uh, he had this, this lady. Um, I've never heard her before in my life. I, and I, I, seriously, I, I, she preached earlier. I don't even know. It was sometime yesterday that she preached, and I just turned, matter of fact, I, I forgot all about that he was going to be on. And I'm just going to make this short and I'm going to get to where we're going to go. But this woman, she started, when she was, started preaching, and I'm like, oh my gosh, there was just something. There was a sound what was coming out of her voice. And it, was, it wasn't a sound that we haven't heard before or anything like that, but she, she was just, she was a southern girl who had dynamite. And she said some very awesome things. Now, if you ask me what she said, I really don't remember all of them. Right. Baby, what was the one, that one that I, I turned around and looked at? I said, that was one of the best statements I've ever heard. Did, you, did everybody hear that? Okay. I know you don't like this, babe, but that's all right. If I have to do it, you got to do it. Don't read and study to prepare a message or a sermon. Read and study to get him in you so what comes out of you is him. I said to her, I said to Jenny, I said, that was like, that was like an a profound that was just totally it just hit me and then the rest of my life was been turned upside down but that's all right it's besides the point so we're going to go on we're moving on i thank god that we're moving on because i want i don't want to be one of those child who gets stuck in the birth canal i want to come through i want his purpose to come out so lord how am i going to do this how am i going to start out this is all to the people that I text this morning. All right? And the rest of us are going to have to listen. We're going to have to listen. And really all I'm going to do is I'm reading the Word of God. I'm just going to read the Word of God. I really felt that Thursday night, that um, Thursday during the morning, if you guys were here on Thursday night, you heard what I said. I was getting ready to go to work, and I was getting ready to walk out, of, out my bathroom door, and sitting on my dresser was that book, Chosen for Greatness. And literally, I heard the Lord say to me, grab the book. So I grabbed the book. And you know the story. Well, you who weren't here, you're going to hear it again. So I grabbed the book. I brought it downstairs. I had another book with me. I actually grabbed my laptop. I went to work. I'm sitting in my car, and I said to the Lord, all right, I got to read the book. Now, what do you want me to do? And he said, read chapter 4. And I said, oh, my God, that was chapter 4. That's what Sister Kathy, Sister Kathy did, and she did a phenomenal job. I don't want to go over through it. And the Lord just said, you just read it. So I just read it. And, and literally, it, God just started working on me. All right? So I want to take up where I left off. But I'm starting off in chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. And I'm going to read a whole lot of scripture. And if the Lord gives me anything, I might comment. If not, I'm just reading scripture. I'm just going to read scripture. All right? 
So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. Do you have it up there, sweetie? It's up there? And I'm going to read it out of the King James Version. So that we, what you guys are looking at and what I'm reading are the same thing. All right? But God. In the beginning was God. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Thank you, Jesus. We can stop right there. But there's more to the story. Even when we were dead in sins, he's quickened us Together. Not individuals. It can be individuals, but it's together. With Christ. I'm going to do one little thing. This word quicken. To re-aminate. Conjointly with. Quicken together with. Listen what Thayer has. To make one alive together. By grace, ye are saved. And has raised us up together. Just a little bit of ring there, Dave. Just a tad. He has raised us up Together. This whole thing, I'm going to read this whole thing. I'm not looking at it as an individual thing because I'm looking at it as a corporate thing. You can look at it as an individual thing if you want, but I'm looking at it as a corporate thing because if I don't make it, you don't make it. If you don't make it, I don't make it. We are going to make it. Let me clarify. See, I have to change my thinking. I have to change my vocabulary. We are making it. If we listen to Brother Samuel today, he said, we've already made it. And the prophet don't lie. Not a word fell to the ground. Oh, we're just looking at Sam? No, 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 no. If that same spirit, which was in Samuel back then, if that same spirit is inside of Samuel, who it is now, And he has raised us together and has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That in the ages to come, that he might show the excellency riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through. Or in, E-N, Christ Jesus. See? You can't have one without the other. Can't have one without the other. For by grace, for by grace, we are saved through faith, and that not by of ourselves. This is the most important thing right here. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. Aren't you glad that God never stopped working? He's constantly working. Now, if I go back to what this, this woman said last night, she said he finished his work from the foundation of the world. It's just starting to come to life in us now. We can fight against it, or we can go easy. Listen, folks, we are a chair he is looking to sit on. So he made a chair. 
Didn't we talk about that today? Didn't somebody say this about that? Why would you need it? But God's looking for something to sit on. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. This whole thing is nothing but a walk. It's a walk. The problem is, I can still hear Brother Doc saying, the more you keep walking in the cattle run, I keep saying, God, why do I keep watching all these farmers what have cattle and sheep and all this? And every time I seem to be watching them, it's always they're in this they're out in the pasture or out where they're supposed to be, and they always are rounding them up to get to an individual thing. And as I watch them, they keep going down this narrow chute. Wide is the gate, and the narrowing is the way that leads to life. And we know this very well, because we think that we've already gained life. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Remember what Doc said one time? It's narrowing down. He's knocking off the antlers. He's getting all the ticks, all the fleas, everything off of it. He's getting everything that he don't want. Because once you hit the, once you get through that one part, all of a sudden it just explodes. Isn't that what you're waiting for? That's what my hope is. My hope is not just that I can do something good. My hope is that when I step through, it explodes. That no longer will you see me, no longer will I look at me, but all I can see is the Christ. Wherefore, remember... That ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcised by that which is called circumcised in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ. You were. You're no longer. Being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope. We got hope. We got hope. My Lord, we got hope. There's a lot of people who don't have hope who are sitting in, in churches. There's a lot of people. But we're not looking at that. We have hope. And without God in this world, Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I really thought that we would be swinging from the chandelier for some reason. I don't know. I don't know if it's because we've heard it so much. But every time I read this, it just, it just changes my countenance. It changes my outlook. When you read the Word of God, it should change you. Because if it doesn't change you, you might as well not read it. See, we heard the thing about it brings conviction. Yes, it does, but he doesn't leave us in conviction. He always brings us to to the life. He always brings us to himself. Verse 14, for he, ha for he is our peace. If there's anything that we need is peace. If there's anything we need is peace. For he is our peace. It's funny because in, my, in the workbook, Brother Kelly always says, Jesus, he's the answer to everything. 
He's the answer to everything. I'm like going, I've heard this all my life. Really? How come I'm not in so much peace? How come things are going this way? How come, how come, how come, how come? But I have to believe what the man said because the man would not lie. He wouldn't tell us a false. He said, Jesus is the answer to every situation. He is our peace who has made us both one and had broken down the middle walls of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the enmity, even the law of commands contained in the ordinance, for to make in himself of twain one new man. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are... And all things are become new. We want to put that right here. We want to put it right up here. Right over this baptismal. I just haven't made up my mind if I want little letters or big letters. Oh, my gosh. Come on, folks. This is the truth. All things are new. Let's move on. One new man, so making peace. Just let that soak in. Making peace. Literally making peace. The crazy thing is it isn't the peace that I want. It's his want. It's what he wants. It's the kind of peace. See, he gives us the peace that he knows that we need at any moment, at any time. See, we think peace is just a one-time deal. It's not. It's an ongoing thing. Ongoing, 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 ongoing. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and... And came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. Thank you, Lord. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Not any other, but one. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. I looked up this word household. You ready? It's ye kiso. My Greek ain't the best, but that's close enough. And it's from... 3624, but it's domestic. That is, as a noun, a relative, adherent, those of his own household. Thayer says, belonging to a house or a family domestic inmate. I always wonder, Paul, always, we knew Paul was in prison, right? I'm a bond servant. I'm all this. He was an inmate. We don't like that word because we feel that we're restricted, we're constrained. But Paul said, I was set free. I'm free. Even though I'm in these bonds, I am free. Amen. Belonging to one's household related by blood. A kindred, belonging to the household of God and belonging, devoted to, adhered of a thing. 
Hallelujah. Verse 20. And are built upon the foundations. Now listen to this. Because I have enough background in construction, I know what foundations are. Foundations are things that you do not see. Everything rests, you're right, brother, but everything rests on foundations. But really, foundations you don't see. So now you've got to think of that, what I just said, and think of what's happening. All right? You've got you to put the, the scripture in context. The foundations. We understand it's something that you're going to build upon, but really, deep down, you don't see too much of a foundation. Usually it's only about a foot or two above the ground. There's always more underneath. It's like those icebergs, right? The icebergs that the Titanic can't. It, it didn't look too big, but they found out it was really big, right? All right, verse 20. I got to back up so I can see it. And are built upon the foundations of the apostles... And the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. In whom all the building, here we go now. It's all the building, not part of the building, but all of the building. See, this is the problem with my house. I didn't build all the building. If I would have built all the building, I wouldn't have a cracked foundation. I wouldn't have a floor that's all messed up, a garage floor that's messed up. But because I didn't build it, because I counted the cost, and I thought the cost was going to be more than what I could handle. I didn't mix it. I had enough faith to put in the foundation and the concrete, but I didn't have enough faith to complete the project. But when God starts a project, he completes it. You want to know the crazy thing about it is? I have a foundation and I have a concrete floor. According to the state or the town, it's a finished building. And so I'm paying taxes on something that's not there. We can say what we want, and I'm not even going to go down that way. All I say is God, he keeps talking to me through my foundation. And it's personal. We are built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom, the, in whom all the building fitly framed together. Groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are built together for an Habitation of God through or in the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this cause, for this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth our name, that he would grant you according to the riches, to the fullness of his glory, and to strengthen and oh wait a second, to glory, to be strengthened with might in the spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. That's what it's all about. It's love. He wants you to be rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all the saints, not part of them, not some of them, not the ones who have the intelligence, 
but with all. No one's left out. Nobody's left out. With all the saints, what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ. If there's anything I'm learning in the past three years since I've taken over, it's the love of Christ in the midst of the family. Which passeth knowledge that, that ye might be filled with all, all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. See, it's not an individual thing. Remember back in the day they used to have we used to have that thing the anointing on all of us is greater than the anointing than on any one of us. I heard this yesterday. Brother Steve was saying this. He said that uh, the pulpit, this pulpit, he asked the question: How many times do you think it's mentioned in the Bible? I didn't know it. I started thinking. I couldn't think it. And literally, you could hear people thinking. And he went like this. One time. One time. It's mentioned. And he gave the scripture. What was it again, Mom? In Ezra. I'm like, you would have thought that this position, right, would be mentioned more. But he said, he said this one thing. He said when he told them to go out and preach and do all that, he wasn't talking about going behind here. He says you go into where you live. When you're going in and you're going out. You preach at work. You preach at home. You preach to your kids. You... Preach. Preach. What are you preaching? The good news. The good news. Hallelujah. <laughs> Unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. World. Everybody's looking for the world to come to an end? It said the world without end. So I don't think the world's going anywhere. That's what the next word was. Amen. Amen. Let's settle it. The world's not going anywhere. It don't matter how bad and how many the doomsday preachers are saying or whatever. Guess what? It's not going anywhere. It's here. It's here to stay. I have always had this concept. Why in the world would God create something to destroy it? It doesn't make sense. The Bible says, let the glory of the Lord fill all the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's all I have. That's all I have.